Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Red Storm Report here on MSG. The Johnnies are back in Queens after wrapping up a road trip, and we're back on the tube. Here's what's coming up on the show. First up, Mike Anderson's mic'd up for a weekly sit-down interview. In this week's chat, we touch upon the big win against UConn, closing out games late in conference play, and what to expect from St. John's moving forward. In our player profile, we'll get to know the versatile 6'10 Juco transfer. That's Isaiah Moore. Like the NBA, the Johnnies made their way to a bubble down in Mohegan Sun Arena. We'll take a look at their time in Bubbleville. Next, Julian Champenny, been named the Big East Player of the Week. We'll take a special look at Julian and his amazing conference plays. This Johnny's already made it on Sports Center's Top 10 Countdown. Women's basketball transfer Camry Clegg is our inside women's basketball profile this week. And we'll finish off with the top three so far this season. You know the young bucks like pulling up from downtown. You know the drill. Don't turn that channel. Pull up a chair. The red storm report comes at you now. For the lead, yes! The Red Storm Report presented by Teachers Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of St. John's Athletics. The Red Storm Report is brought to you by New York Presbyterian Queens, the official hospital and team doctors of St. John's Athletics. Amazing things are happening here. Teachers Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of St. John's Athletics. Teachers Federal Credit Union, smart for you. United Healthcare Oxford, built for hashtag fit and fab. See what's new. Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Red Storm Report here on MSG. Brands and Tierney back on campus here in Queens. St. John's fans, how'd you like sticking the UConn Huskies with a home loss this week? What a great win. Come from behind win for the Red Storm. We'll take a look at that. Of course, coming up on the show, my chat with head coach Mike Anderson. But first, we're going to look at what's next for the Johnnies as we take a look at their schedule. The Johnnies looking to add to their portfolio. They've added a game against Utah Valley. That's coming up this Saturday in Queens. And after that, they get ready to battle DePaul in DePaul. So they'll be on the Blue Demons home turf as St. John's travels to the Windy City. So a little non-conference tune-up as St. John's tries to remain sharp, coming off the win against the UConn Huskies. After that, out to the Windy City, taking on DePaul as St. John's will try to stick another conference W in their back pocket. So with that in mind, time to get a state of the program, a state of affairs by weekly chat with head coach Mike Anderson right now. Talking about our team, I thought we took another step, another step in the right direction in terms of becoming the team we want to be. Uh, we saw some adversity, we were up four and they make a three. And uh, we talked about our guys having to make a play and they went to the free throw line, missed a couple free throws. And, we had guys go to the free throw line and, and make a free throw. So, uh, again, as Posh said, you know, it's the time, you know, I got to celebrate to midnight and then it's over with. Uh, we've been in so many close games, uh, games that we were right there in position to win it. And so uh, confidence has to brew in, you know, uh, playing against a UConn team that's been playing real well. I think they've won like the last four game, five games in a row. They've been on the road. And so for us to come in and offer up a tough loss at Marquette, uh, and I can't say enough about this, the guy you just had, Posh. Uh, I don't think you guys realize, he didn't even practice yesterday. I mean, his tailbone was, you know, he'd been doing just getting treatment. So for him to come out and have that kind of performance uh, when it was needed, it says a lot about him. Uh, he talked about, I thought two of the guys that brought the physicalness for us was, I thought Marcellus and I thought Dilla. I thought they brought the physicality. I thought they brought the, the aggressiveness, the toughness that you got to have. But it was a good, good team win. I thought we just needed to put together 40 minutes, and I thought we did that from the defensively. I thought we were good. I thought we turned the ball over too much. Uh, but, you know, every time we go out, we're trying to win. Man. It, it's, you know, almost don't get it done. And we're almost at Marquette at home. And so, obviously, you want to go out on the road and, 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 and still win. And I thought we, we did today. Uh, we have a team that is, it, it's not dependent on one or two guys. If they don't play well, we don't win. Uh, so now some other guys had an opportunity to to go out and perform, and they did at a, at a really good level. I mean, don't don't forget Josh. I thought Josh was really good, and I thought I thought our bench really played well. I thought Isaiah came out and gave us some some uh, some quality minutes. So I think guys are starting to, and you're gonna see different guys different nights. Uh, tonight it was Dylan, and of course I thought Marcelo was really big for us, especially in the waning moments of the game, going back and forth. And, and how about Rasheed? He had shot free throws well, and uh, he knocks two big ones down there to give us the three point lead. So. Uh, Again, this team continues to evolve, and, I, and that's 
you know, we didn't have the luxury of having 16, uh, 15, uh, 13, well, 15 games, I said. The non-conference schedule and two exhibition games. We jumped right into the fire. And so we're learning, we're gravitating, uh, we're, 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 I think we're formulating our identity. Back in the day, Louie used to say that he recruited using Subway tokens only. The game's obviously changed a little bit since then, but the point remains the same. New York City kids, they can flat out bowl. Look no further than Monday for the proof of that. Five New York kids, four for the boroughs and one from up in Rockland County, reads double figures and carry the Johnnies to the win against the Huskies. Brooklyn born and Bronx bred Pasha Alexander finished with 18 points, six assists and three steals. He went over to Jersey to play his high school ball, but will forgive Marcellus Erlington as he pumped in 15 points and drained three three-pointers. Two Brooklyn kids who bucked the trend and stayed home to play their high school ball, Julian Champagny and Rashid team done they finished with 12 points and 11 respectively and last but not least the freshman dylan adai wusu physical kid scored all 10 of his points in the first half to help the johnnies hang around early i think i speak for everybody when i say i can't wait to see the young kids continue to develop especially representing nyc Hey everybody, John Fanta checking in from Carneseca Arena and the New York City kids are going to be back in action on Saturday for Eastern time when St. John's welcomes in Utah Valley. This game just getting added to the schedule in an unprecedented 2020-21 campaign. The Red Storm looking to get back out on the floor. Talking with Mike Anderson, he brought up the fact that right now games, they do more than any practice could and with the momentum that the Johnnies are riding, coming off that first win at UConn in 21 years. For the Red Storm, they're looking to capitalize and keep this rolling. They'll have to be good inside because Utah Valley is 3-0 in the WAC and they have the nation's leading rebounder, Fardaw's AMAC. So for the Red Storm, they'll need Josh Roberts to contribute inside, Isaiah Moore as well. And Mike Anderson saying, I want to see the toughness in my team on Saturday afternoon. That all starts with Pasha Alexander, who's been one of the top freshmen in the Big East Conference and leading the league now, folks, with 2.5 steals per game. That's one of the best marks in the country. He just plays that New York City style. Johnny's back in action against the Utah Valley Wolverines. It'll come to you Saturday, 4 Eastern time on FS1. And Red Storm Nation, you're in for a treat because former Johnny Tariq Turner will be joining me on the telecast. Johnny's Utah Valley, big weekend ahead right here inside Carnesecca Arena. Coming up, Isaiah Moore sits down in the interview chair to tell us about his journey to St. John's. This week's edition of the Player Profile on the Red Storm Report, up next, right after the break. The guy did not signal. Next thing I know, I was all the way up in the air, and, and I knew it was horrific. They took me right into uh, New York Presbyterian, and they came to me, and they said, there's an 80% chance, Tom, that you're going to lose your leg. The next day, the plastic surgeon came. She said, I have an idea. They thought outside the box, completely outside the box. I, I remember coming out of uh, anesthesia. I saw my... <laughs> My, my little toes. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Welcome back to the Red Storm Report here on MSG. Brandon Tierney on campus in Queens. And of course, you look at the Johnnies this year, you see a few new additions, one of whom is tough to miss. Six foot ten, great versatility, great skill set. Juco transfer Isaiah Moore as we get a look at the stats so far on the season. Moore showed he's a valuable asset to the team in multiple ways on the court. His height contributes to being third on the team in block shots, as well as racking up some rebounds. His versatility and ability to move up and down the court and in the system that Mike Anderson deploys has allowed the JUCO transfer to thrive. So as you can tell, Isaiah doing a little bit of everything so far for the Johnnies. With that being said, let's actually learn a little bit more about the JUCO transfer, what he's all about, 
and how his road has taken him here to Queens. Time now for the player profile. My basketball journey wasn't everybody else's. Like, absolutely nobody could have predicted this. Nobody thought I would play high major. Nobody thought I would be here. Coach Anderson, he was the first head coach to actually come down to my school and talk to me and sit down with me. And ever since then, I kind of fell in love with the school. And I took my visit with Dylan and Posh, and I kind of, you know, made it home and made it a family. Isaiah is a versatile guy, 6'10", can play on the perimeter, inside, block shot. Again, he's just very, very talented. We play very up and down, you know, fast pace, and for me to be a versatile forward, I really run the floor well for a person of my size, so I feel like with our pressure defense and the way that I play being a versatile big that's quick and fast, it really helps me, you know, be able to show my game and, you know, his system. The first time I met Isaiah was when I found out he was going to be playing on my A team. My coach told us we had a 16 player coming in and he was going to be starting right away. Nobody met him. Me playing with V on AAU kind of helped my decision to come here because that's somebody I already knew and was, was used to. Once I made my decision, I was on the airport uh, going back home and he called me. He's like, yo, bro, I seen you committed and he was coming up here next week. And so I didn't really have to say much. I was just like, you know what you got to do. Got a great feel for the game. A uh, very good passer. Got great hands. And you know, if you're a big guy, and you got great hands, and you got a little basketball like you, you have a chance to be a special player. And I think Isaiah, uh, he has that. He has a desire to to to, to be a good player. His game is uh, versatile. He can he can step out, shoot threes, handle the rock a little bit. He can do everything. So I mean. When you got a player like that that can really do everything, it makes the game a lot easier for everybody else. I wasn't always tall. Like, I was 5'9 uh, my freshman year of high school. And then I grew to six foot my sophomore year. And then from my sophomore year to my junior year, I grew seven inches that summer. I grew to 6'7. And then from my junior year to my senior year, I grew three inches, I grew to 16. So, like, I played point guard my freshman year of high school. So, I guess that's, you know, where, you know, dribbling and all that stuff come from. My mom played basketball, coached basketball, my dad. Uh, he's coached overseas, dad coached in college. I see my mom work hard to like get us to where we are now. So like it kind of made me want to work harder with everything like that I do because I seen all the stuff and sacrifice that she made for me to be able to you know, be in this position and through all those child tribulations that that molded me even more from you know how I grew up and stuff and, and to now it really made me like Appreciate it more and know that can't can't nothing can't nothing break me. I'm different. I'm I'm one of one, um, a unicorn. It's only one me, one person made like me, one person that's like me. So um, I'm different. Grab it up. We'll take you inside of Bubbleville. The Red Storm took a trip inside the Mohegan Sun bubble. You get a look at what went down. That's coming up. Also, Julian Champetti, the Big East Player of the Week. Don't go anywhere. The Red Storm Report is back in a second. The guy did not signal. Next thing I know, I was all the way up in the air, and, and I knew it was horrific. They took me right into uh, New York Presbyterian, and they came to me, and they said, there's an 80% chance, Tom, that you're going to lose your leg. The next day, the plastic surgeon came. She said, I have an idea. They thought outside the box, completely outside the box. I, I remember coming out of... Uh, anesthesia. I saw my, my, my little toes. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Back here on the Red Storm Report, Brandon Tierney with you. So one thing we know about trying to plow through a season during a pandemic is you better have a couple of options on the table, one of which would be deploying a bubble. We saw this with the NBA, and we've seen this to an extent with some college teams as well, including St. John's up at Mohegan Sun, Bubbleville, Johnny style. What was it like? Take a look. Bubbleville. 
I mean, uh, it was it was it was a little rough. It was a little awkward at first, not being able to you know move around. Well, Houston Times a big a big place. We went there last year, so the experience from last year and the experience from this year just two completely different things. I think it was cool, but it was just a little too distant because there was nobody there, nobody. So it was like you see the same people over and over, and it kind of gets frustrating. Like you're just stuck in a hole, like a little box where you can't go nowhere. If you're not in the gym, you're on one floor. You didn't go out and do anything. So from that standpoint, it was different. I mean, you know, you had a lot of different teams there. We all had the same schedule. So it's like, you can't really, you can't really leave on your own. We all met and then we all left. So it was just, it was just very different. We was like quarantined to the rooms like throughout the day. They like escorted us like to lunch, breakfast, stuff like that. But other than being the room, it was really like, you know, just basketball, really, you know, getting ready for the games and stuff like that. We couldn't really do much. It was crazy to be a part of. And I don't think that people realize how, I guess, how weird it is. I feel like it's a smart way to play basketball games during this time to ensure, like, safety of players and coaches. The promoters did a really good job of, of having everything organized, whether it be meals or, or when we went to watch films or when we went to work out, uh, even to when we played the game. We were just able to, I guess, think more about the game and think more game, like game plan more. We got to play, you know, we got to, we got to do what we, what we love to do. You know, we didn't play basketball, you know, it was like, just be able to like, you know, leave out the room or like, yeah, just do something. About my mindset was just that, you know, I'm able to play the sport I love and whatever whatever it takes, if it means that I gotta stay in the hotel room, you know, for for how long and not leave, then I'll do that. If it means that I can play the game I love. One of the great memories from the bubble was Julian Champetti came back from an early season injury and didn't look rusty at all. Matter of fact, dropped in 32 in his first game and since has maintained that momentum, leading to this terrific award, Big East Player of the Week. And you have to love the development of Julian Champagny. Each week, he gets a little bit better. The mid-range jump shot, attacking the rim, getting to the free throw line, hitting free throws, making teammates better. Right now, as a sophomore, Julian Champagny is a rising star in college basketball. No doubt about that. Give this guy the ball. Pawn it off the glass. Down to Champagny. Bump. And the finish. Good strike. Julian Champagny. Champagny with a nice reach move there. Here's Cole. They get it to Adams, blocked by Champagny. Jordan mentioned to us also, hey, we get a good, quick shot. We're going to take it. Oh, Champagny took it. Reynolds didn't settle. Found Mamu Kalashvili and Champagny with the defensive spurt. from his spot in the corner against the zone, too. Good reaction. Alexander to Champagne. He powers it in. I just like to be dribbling the ball up against this guy. Oh, Alexander. man. Another rip. He's got a layup. Champagne hits his spot. And the Big East scoring leader. Nice look to the middle. Wow. For the lead, yes! Champagne! Wow. Just wild the way he's come out. Coming up, the transfer of Camry Clegg is our feature inside women's basketball. And lastly, we're raining three, some of the best three-point shots of the season. The New York Presbyterian Amazing Plays highlights to end the show. We'll be right back. The guy did not signal. Next thing I know, I was all the way up in the air, and, and I knew it was horrific. They took me right into uh, New York Presbyterian, and they came to me, and they said, there's an 80% chance, Tom, that you're going to lose your leg. The next day, the plastic surgeon came. She said, I have an idea. They thought outside the box, completely outside the box. I, I remember coming out of uh, anesthesia. I saw my, my, my little toes. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked.
Once I, I decided I wanted to transfer and I decided that, you know, he called and Coach Nick called and they're like, you know, we want you, let's, let's get it, let's get this done, we, you know, let's do it. I'll say that, you know, I chose it for the city and the opportunities as well. Um, obviously, there's life after basketball. Cam probably hadn't played a game, which I didn't realize, for about two years. So when she transferred in, she had to sit, then obviously COVID extends that a little bit longer. Sitting on the sidelines, it, it was hard to, you know, watch my team play and knowing that I can't even get in. I just have to, you know, be the best cheerleader from the sidelines. But I feel like it was a year of, you know, growth, improvement. Um, I was able to, to grow as a person and as a basketball player. And it really helped me. And then, you know, once the season and got shut down uh, because of COVID. I was able to go home. I actually did a lot, a lot more work back home. You know, keep working because I knew that this season was coming and it was time for me to play. So it was time to put the pedals in the middle and, and get after it. There was nobody more excited to play our first game than probably Cam was. And so the fact that she could make a half court shot in the first game back and she's on Sports Center top ten, like you know, I think that's just things that come from. Uh, being the positive person that she is and, and, and putting in the work that she does. Those things don't happen by accident. And something I didn't imagine at all. I mean, I was just excited to play at, at the end of the day. So, um, you know, I think it was just like that, that day is still surreal to me. It was the start and I knew that, all right, now we just got to keep elevating from there. And, and, you know, I've just been trying to get better every day and, and improve on the court and be grateful for every time I can step on the floor. She's a kid who changes the game because she can take charges. She'll, she'll sacrifice her body. She, she plays with, with great energy all the time. And I think um, that's one thing that we love about her, especially in practice every day. She brings energy, she does all those things. You know, my parents, like, they sacrificed everything for me, you know, to, to be in the position I am today. Like this with my parents, um, I mean, every day I talk to them. They send me all the highlights, they text me during the games, they call me after the games, critique, you know, uh, praise when it's needed and stuff like that, but they keep me grounded. Both my parents played um, in high school, so uh, they used to say I was like in the stroller watching them play one-on-one -on -one at the park when I was growing up. Basketball has just always been a part of my life. I think I, I was just destined to play it at this point. So Cam doing a great job, as you can tell, early on here for St. John's. That'll just about wrap it up here on the Red Storm Report. But before we bounce, we've got to leave you with some highlights. Time for the New York Presbyterian. Amazing plays all behind the arc. Some long range splashes. Enjoy, and we'll catch you next week right here on the Red Storm Report. Be well, everybody. Shot here. Three seconds for Erlington. Erlington. What a way to close the first half for the Red Storm. Shot clock at six. Oh, but he's going to have to go. She has Benny the Williams. Fires up with two and he hits. Oh, my God. That celebration has been the one. Coming up on 10 seconds to play. They're going to play this one out. It's Cole for three from the wing. And the Johnnies have a one point lead. Huge shot by Cole. And that play. Alexander's hustle. Mentioned to us also, hey, if we get a good, quick shot, we're going to take it. No champagne. Okay. Only a time to get a shot. Two or three more dribbles. Here's Cole. And good. Nice look to the middle. Wow. For the lead. Yes. Champagne.
The Red Storm Report is brought to you by New York Presbyterian Queens, the official hospital and team doctors of St. John's Athletics. Amazing things are happening here. Teachers Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of St. John's Athletics. Teachers Federal Credit Union, smart for you. United Healthcare Oxford, built for hashtag fit and fab. See what's new. The guy did not signal. Next thing I know, I was all the way up in the air, and, and I knew it was horrific. They took me right into uh, New York Presbyterian, and they came to me, and they said, there's an 80% chance, Tom, that you're going to lose your leg. The next day, the plastic surgeon came. She said, I have an idea. They thought outside the box, completely outside the box. I, I remember coming out of uh, anesthesia. I saw my, my, my little toes. It worked. It worked. <laughs> it worked.